What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nations, bloggingtheboys.com. Hope all is wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and that you're excited because we have some actual news to discuss. Please subscribe here to the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. We're keeping you updated on all things Dallas Cowboys free agency. We, of course, have draft talk, draft coverage coming your way in just a few weeks with the 2022 NFL draft just around the corner. But for now, we put that on the back burner. For now, we have to celebrate because just happening right now, now as I get ready to record this about 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, the Dallas Cowboys got him back. That's right, J. Ron Curse returning to the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Morning News is the first to report the two-year deal that J. Ron has agreed to with America's team. This was big. We've been waiting for this for a long time. J. Ron, obviously an important part of the Cowboys defense this past season. In fact, a staple. You know, it's hard to be Micah Parsons, but J. Ron turned into a leader. He had the green dot on the back of his helmet, as we talked about, we learned about, etc., etc. We saw the Cowboys bring Malik Hooker back a few days ago. It feels like a few days ago, about a week ago at this point. Uh, the Cowboys now up to 10 players who they have brought back as far as, you know, their roster, how they're tinkering with it and whatnot. But J. Ron was a necessity. They could not go through this offseason without bringing him back. This is a huge win for the Dallas Cowboys. I mentioned the 10 players they have brought back. We now are able to update the graphic with the Cowboys moves so far. You look at it, players brought back Dalton Schultz at the very top of that list. These are basically in chronological order. That's why they're not changing. Michael Gallup, Jeremy Sprinkle, Noah Brown, Jake McQuaid, Malik Hooker, Dorrance Armstrong, Leighton Van Der Esch, whose name is too long that we had to shorten it, Luke Gifford, and now J. Ron Curse. Didn't get that classic Cowboys coveted one-year deal they love, got that extra year, so he's around for a little bit longer. 10 players the Cowboys now bringing back as far as their roster from last season is concerned. This isn't necessarily saying the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl, but this is a very positive step. We had been waiting a long time. It's been felt, you know, <laughs> I'm getting tripped over my words. It's felt like months waiting to hear whether or not J. Ron would be returning. If you follow him on Twitter, there'd been some kind of weird breadcrumbs being dropped. Uh, you know, poor J. Ron couldn't even tweet without everybody reading all the way into it. But you know, speaking of J-Ron's Twitter, he did have a tweet to announce the news on Twitter at J-Ron Curse. Uh, right there, as you can see. Uh, much gratitude and glory to God, but this far from over. Very excited to have J-Ron Curse back in the fold. An important member of this Dallas Cowboys defense, as mentioned. He's not going anywhere. He's here to stay. You can finally relax. We can all relax. I can relax. Big move. And look, I don't want to take this away from the Dallas Cowboys. This is their moment. This is J-Ron's moment. But they let him sit on the open market market for about a week. Now, maybe that was a strategic play that worked out. Some people say the results are all that matters. Uh, maybe this process of, of being out on the open market and not getting an offer that overwhelmed J-Ron ultimately knocked his price down. But the Dallas Cowboys got it done. J-Ron back in the fold. Those are the things that matter. So like I said, feel free to celebrate. Now, you saw in our moves so far that Dalton Schultz is up there. Obviously got the franchise tag. That's not breaking news by any stretch of the imagination. But a bit of news on Monday. Dalton Schultz, according to ESPN's Field Yates officially signed his franchise tender. This is important franchise tag value for the tight ends this season in the NFL, about $11 million. So that is now, uh, well, not now. He's been on the books for that Dalton Schultz has, but there's not going to be any drama about whether or not he's going to sign it, not going to sign it. We've done that dance before with Dak Prescott, Demarcus Lawrence. So it is signed. Time will tell whether or not you can see uh, in Field's tweet that he does have until the summer to work at a long-term deal with the Cowboys. We will see because do Doing so would lower his cap hit in all likelihood for this season. We know the Cowboys have been moving heaven and earth to create salary cap space right now. Dalton Schultz uh, officially in the fold for the 2022 season at the very least. All right. Those are the official things. J. Ron's back. Dalton Schultz officially signs his franchise tag tender. Let's move on. Getting emotional here. All right. Here we go. Had a coffee. Just wasn't sitting right with me. I'm good. All right. Let's move on. Uh, the big kind of rumor of the day when it came to the Dallas Cowboys, come to the Dallas Cowboys, is, and we talked about this on our last video. By the way, our most recent video here on our YouTube channel is a film review from Matt Minnick on Dante Fowler, who officially became a part of the Cowboys on Monday. But prior to that, on Sunday's update, uh, we commented and said, hey, the Cowboys reportedly have strong interest in Zedarius Smith. So what's the situation there? Well, Aaron Wilson of Pro 
Pro Football Network did report very early on Monday morning, as you can see right there, 6.30 a.m. Again, I'm reading the, the tweet, the quote verbatim. Zadaria Smith, sources say Dallas Cowboys making strong push to land veteran pass rusher after deal with Ravens wasn't completed, and former Green Bay Packers chose to remain a free agent. Now, in case your mind has gone to this place, Zadarius and Mike McCarthy did not overlap together in Green Bay. The Packers brought he and Preston Smith in. The Smith brothers was a big old thing. Uh, in 2019, when McCarthy was finally gone and they decided to finally start spending some money, he was awesome for the Packers in 2019. He was awesome for the Packers in 2020. He played the first game this past season, got surgery on his back for an issue that started up in training camp, missed the rest of the regular season, and returned for the Packers playoff game as I lower the volume on my computer. Uh, obviously, they lost to the San Francisco 49ers. That would suck. You know what I mean? But uh, he reportedly agreed to terms with the Baltimore Ravens, and so we all kind of felt like that was not going to happen as far as him joining the Cowboys. This happened at the time the Cowboys lost that on Von Miller. I say lost that if you ultimately believe that Dallas was really in the running. Maybe they're going to lose out on Zedaria Smith because, according to NFL Network, Zedaria Smith was visiting the Minnesota Vikings on Monday. In fact, not just according to NFL Network, according to the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings themselves announced a free agent visit with Zedaria Smith. He obviously knows the NFC North very well. Maybe he wants a little bit of revenge against the Green Bay Packers. Who knows? But the fact that this was so official of a visit that the Vikings were allowed to announce it uh, seems not great as far as Darius's odds to end up with the Dallas Cowboys, but we will see. Okay, so that's it. That's the latest on Zedaria Smith. Like I said, putting this together about 5.30 p.m. Central Time. We'll always keep you updated here on the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. Please make sure you're unsubscribed. We've seen a lot of new subscribers lately. We love you, new subscribers. Keep subscribing. Keep making us feel loved. Uh, let's just spread love to every single person in the world. Let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, let's move on. Uh, an update of sorts. A couple updates with Dak Prescott, who has a partnership with Walk-Ons. Maybe you've been to one of their restaurants before. They've got some great kind of grilled chicken tenders. There's one near me and I love to get that. My wife and I, we go share the, they have a name for the chips in case. I don't know what it is, but it's a whole different conversation. Anyway, Dak Prescott doing an appearance at a walk-ons uh, to celebrate another opening um, and obviously answered a couple questions, did a couple of things, etc., and noted that his shoulder is fine. We obviously talked about Dak Prescott having shoulder surgery after Mike McCarthy let that be known that that had happened during his appearance at the NFL Combine. It is his left shoulder surgery, so his non-throwing shoulder. Dak, uh, according to himself, is fine, so way to go QB1. Of course, Dak Prescott asked about the state of things with the Dallas Cowboys, and the state of things obviously meaning... Um being kind of boring now you know not to take away from the J1 Kershine but Dak was asked uh and was asked specifically about the free agent departure said this is the hardest part of the league to me just watching teammates and friends watching men who you have grown up with the past few years on the field and off the field leave depart and understand that's the business of this game you look at it you think about it, Dak has had to watch at least just this offseason Amari Cooper get traded away. Amari really elevated Dak's game, kind of unlocked the franchise quarterback that Dak Prescott is. It would understandably be difficult to watch him go. Cedric Wilson's gone. Connor Williams is gone. Um... Randy Gregory's gone. I mean, Lyle Collins is gone. Dak Prescott's very famously close with Lyle Collins. Obviously, the Louisiana connection right there. It is a business. It is unfortunate. Uh, but that is what Dak Prescott had to say. What did he have to say about the current roster? Said things happen, things change. I think it will be to that standard here soon. Obviously, things aren't done. Free agency isn't done. The draft's not done. And a lot of the roster is to come. Same kind of line. A lot of you like to say, hey, don't worry. The Cowboys, the, the, is the draft over? Why are you freaking out, guys? The draft's still has to happen yes the draft still has to happen the Dallas Cowboys generally draft very well hopefully that is the case uh, in about a month or so from now by the way we'll have a ton of coverage throughout the draft for you here on the blog of the boys YouTube channel we'll be live throughout it all so we'd love for you to join us bring some snacks we'll have some good times we'll have a lot of panelists and a lot of guests uh, as things continue to unfold um Hopefully the Cowboys do improve by way of the draft, but there are opportunities to improve right now. Zedaria Smith is an opportunity like that. Bobby Wagner is an opportunity like that. J. Ron Curse was an opportunity like that that the Dallas Cowboys were able to capitalize on. So uh, hopefully the Cowboys um, continue that path. One last thing from Dak Prescott. He was asked about C.D. Lamb. Obviously C.D. now emerging as the top wide receiver on the Cowboys with Amari Cooper out of the fold and said it's just exciting to know it's only the beginning and he hasn't even scratched the surface for him to be the one one, to be the main guy. I know he's going to be ready for it. Look, I'm not saying CD should in no way be considered the top wide receiver for the Cowboys, but isn't it kind of weird? Not like bad weird, but just strange that 
now everybody can talk about it this way. Like Michael Gallup just got a new deal, you know, <laughs> and we're over here like CD's the one. Um, so uh, just um, kind of the way, you know, the game goes uh, in certain senses. So uh, very interesting there. That is uh, everything that we have as far as Dak Prescott is concerned. Last thing I wanted to touch on before we got out of here, because I do think it's relevant, um, is – Anything can happen, right? Anything can happen. We've seen a crazy shift so far throughout the NFL. A crazy exodus of sorts is the word that a lot of people are using as far as the NFC and AFC are concerned. We've seen a lot of players leave the NFC to get to the AFC by way of trades, free agency, etc. Let's get this up there. You can't see Matt Ryan's name because, uh, you know, let's just do this. We'll do this on the fly. Uh, let's see if we can do it. I'm going to shrink my camera. Look at this, people. We can do anything together. And I'll move me over to the corner nice and neat right there. There. Boom. Okay. So these are notable players to lead the NFC. Don't say that I can't, you know, tap dance and, and be quick on my feet. I just did all that, you know, mid show. All right. Round of applause for us. We did it together. These are all players who have left the NFC just this offseason. This is crazy so far when you look at it. And the uh, the logos you're seeing are the NFC teams that they have left. Obviously, Russell Wilson and Randy Gregory, the newest members of the Denver Broncos, Devontae Adams and Chandler Jones, the newest members of the Las Vegas Raiders. A former Raider, Khalil Mack, leaves the Chicago Bears to the Los Angeles Chargers. Von Miller is technically an NFC departure, but he's been an AFC guy his entire career, and he was even an AFC guy this time last year. He was only traded to the NFC uh, in the middle of this past season, so it is a a a defection, but, you know, not a massive one in that sense, but still technically counts. Alex Kappa and Lyle Collins both joining the Cincinnati Bengals, so did Ted Karras, but Ted leaving New England, so staying in the AFC there. Amari Cooper, as we all know, we've referenced it already this particular episode, uh, joining the Cleveland Browns, leaving the Cowboys. Robert Woods this past weekend traded from the Los Angeles Rams to the Tennessee Titans, and Matt Ryan on Monday traded for uh, a third-round pick. Just kind of crazy the way that whole situation unfolded from the Atlanta Falcons to the Indianapolis Colts. Now, the Cowboys do not play the AFC West this year, so they won't see any of Russ, Randy, Devontae, Chandler Jones, or Khalil Mack on unless they see that team in the Super Bowl. Von Miller plays for the Buffalo Bills. The Cowboys will not see them either. The Cowboys will see the Cincinnati Bengals where Alex Kappa and Lyle Collins play. They will not see uh, Amari Cooper and the Cleveland Browns again unless they meet in the Super Bowl. Robert Woods plays for the Tennessee Titans now. The Cowboys and the entire NFC East do visit or do host uh, host and visit, do play the AFC South in 2022, so they will see him, which means they will also play Matt Ryan in the Indianapolis Colts. It will be a very weird world to watch Dan Quinn be the defensive coordinator of the Cowboys taking on Matt Ryan, the quarterback of the Colts. Obviously, we saw that matchup this past year, but uh, again, the fact that they'll both be wearing different colors and uniforms, etc. It's just always a weird thing. And my point in showing you all of this is look at all of the talent that is leaving the conference and opening it wide open. Even the Packers and Buccaneers are losing players. It's unfortunate that we have three Cowboys stars on this screen, but the Cowboys and any NFC team that is close, the Rams obviously won the Super Bowl. The Bucks obviously won it last year. The Packers are the Packers. I don't know how the 49ers aren't going more all in here. I don't know how, I mean, the Vikings aren't going more all in here. This conference is so wide open. It is unbelievable. Only one AFC team can make it to the Super Bowl. And so if you're an NFC team, now is the time to strike. Dallas Cowboys, please listen to that. So that does it. Crazy stuff this particular episode, all right? You and me, we made it through even that that little snafu we had where I had to shrink my screen and everything like that. But you know what? They said it couldn't be done, and they were wrong. So we appreciate all of you new subscribers who are joining us in our path to talk about the Dallas Cowboys together. We understand your time is very important to you. We take that very seriously. So we want to deliver you the best possible product, the best possible Dallas Cowboys coverage that we can. We ask kindly thank you to my dog for barking. Uh, you know, that's just what happens, guys. Sometimes... You have to deal with it, um, and that means uh, it's time to go. My name is RJ Ochoa. You know me from Blogging the Boys, bloggingtheboys.com. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram at RJ Ochoa. I promise we're okay. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time.